Good afternoon and welcome to Flap and Focus. Today we have a special Flap and Focus for you. We have a candidate for U.S. Senate. Uh, Beth Lindstrom is running on the Republican Party against Elizabeth Warren in the fall, we hope. Uh, and so she's here today to uh, answer some questions for us. But before we get going, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Beth in case you're not familiar with who she is. She is uh, she was the first uh, executive female executive director of the Republican Party in Massachusetts. Uh, she was also the director of the Massachusetts Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulations, overseeing several departments. And she was also the executive director of the Massachusetts State Lottery, at which time it was considered the best and the most efficient in the country. Um, and if she wins the primary this fall, she'll be the first female Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Massachusetts. Welcome, Beth. Well, thank you very much. Nice, nice to have you here. Introduction. No, Tell us a little it. bit about yourself and why you're running. Sure. So I, uh, I got into this race because I felt that we needed someone who's going to represent the people of Massachusetts because Elizabeth Warren is setting her sights on the 2020 presidential election. And I've had a long history of helping candidates get elected in Massachusetts. I actually, as you said, was the first Republican executive director, female. But I worked there before that for three years, where we cultivated recruiting candidates across the state. And we were able to elect, at that time, Bill Weld. Paul Salucci and Joe Malone. And not only that, but we elected enough state senators to sustain Governor Wells' veto. And that was really important for him to be as effective as he was as a governor. I also was an advisor to Governor Romney on his gubernatorial campaign. Mm -hmm. And I ran Scott Brown's first campaign. So I know the tsunami of a national race and what sure. that could be like. Um, and in addition, most recently, I was um, president of a super PAC that helped Charlie Baker get elected called Commonwealth Future, which we raised um, millions of dollars and spent millions of dollars reminding voters that Martha Coakley didn't know what the gas tax was. And still, he only won by 40,000 votes. So I know what it's like, you know, how hard it is to win in Massachusetts. Yeah, but, and that's why we need to put our best candidate forward. So I've jumped into the race because I know what that's like, you know, the political side of things. Um, you talked about a little bit of my other background with the lottery and, you know, uh, consumer affairs and business regulation, where one of the things I was most proud of is we actually uh, won a better government award by culling out unnecessary regulations for businesses to make them run smoother, but also consumer. So I understand that balance between consumer protection and business regulation, but we also uh, worked for two years under Governor Romney to introduce competition into the auto insurance market yes. and that lowered rates for consumers now you can buy your Geico and Progressive but sure. that was a, that was a long project for many years in addition I've actually done four startup companies too I've been involved um, and a couple of my own so That's I know fun. what it's like to uh, start a business to be able to raise capital or use your own money sure and you know one in ten businesses um, you know make it so it's Absolutely. hard. It's a lot of risk reward. And, and I'm actually a small business owner. I have a small business in Groton, Mass. So I know what it's like to make a payroll. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and that helps. That uh, definitely absolutely. helps. Absolutely. So, that, so that's with good. that perspective, that's why I've jumped into the race, because I think it will offer something very different than what our current U.S. Senator is offering. All right. Well, let's get right to the question so sure. our voters can get to know you and sure. you know, see where you stand on the issues. Sure. Uh, one of the first things I'd like to talk about is the tax reform. Mm -hmm. We just went through this uh, big issue right now. A lot of people have a lot of opinions on it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the, the tax reform? Well, a as a business owner, I know the value of lowering the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. And I know what that has meant or means to me in terms of being able to hire more people. So I, I, I agree with lowering the corporate tax rate because they, you know, people will spend more money. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just reading in the Wall Street Journal this morning that Kimball Clark now is you know, um, going to reinvest and actually do the projects of, of creating plants in Massachusetts. There's actually the United Natural Foods Company is um, now making those decisions to expand, which they were, their market opportunity was becoming less and less in competition um, getting out there because Whole Foods, they need to supply, they couldn't do the supplies. And even Bank of America going to give um, their uh, employees uh, stock options. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, it, there is an effect in the economy when you lower the cost of doing business. There is, and then uh, some people on the other side may say, you know, it's, it's going to add a trillion dollars to the federal debt. So, so how do we justify that? Sure, well that is based on the projection of a 1.9% growth. 
And so if you have 2.6% growth, you that's a like, you know, a break even. Mm -hmm. The last three quarters have been trending 3%. Mm -hmm. So if you get up to the 3 4% grow, uh, growth, then that will um, that will turn that around. Mm -hmm. So, and I believe that that, that would happen. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, too soon to judge, but uh, if you look at just the recent history, um, it has been trending over that 2.6%. So that's important. And then when you also look at it, uh, you know, they, they made the corporate tax cut permanent. But not the individual tax cut. I think that was a rule of the the Senate. So, but you you, you know when that time comes, you can you can, you know you can reevaluate that. We hope, or, but, or that's what people right. will be thinking. But, but can I address one more yeah, thing on the sure. tax reform stuff because this is an example of where Elizabeth Warren. Back in 2012, we had the medical device tax, and I and I pushed on this the end of last year because there's only three states in the country that actually have such a big industry, and we do. And that was a 2.3 percent tax on on revenue for these. You know, it was like surgical devices, MRIs. So she said she would repeal that, and and didn't. And in January 1st, it actually came back and it had a little hiatus. But the point here I want to make is that talking to people, this was jobs. This is 600 jobs for one company here versus going over to the United Kingdom. That's what lowering taxes as that's what getting rid of this medical t de device tax does but along with the spending bill that just happened with the whole government shutdown mm -hmm. there was the money for the children's health program and the su you know suspension of the medical device tax both in that spending bill and she voted against it because you know she wanted it's not agreeing with her presidential aspirations so that's what is wrong when you use this you know you know this example of not representing the people who you should be representing and so i don't know if i talked through that too quickly but no, you know the it's, point it's, is it's that it's an important factor to make absolutely be i mean that's that's what you're running as a candidate so you yeah. want to point out those things absolutely uh, so you support the tax reform. You think it's a good thing. I do, and you know we'll see as it goes along. But again, you've heard of all these companies now giving bonuses and increasing the wages and increasing their charitable giving, mm -hmm. and which is really important too. Yeah. So and and just more today. So it, you know hopefully, hopefully we'll see more. Hopefully we'll more. start to see right. those wages, mm -hmm. those increased wages. Really, eighty percent of the people in Massachusetts will see more in their paychecks. Yes. Well, that's important, mm -hmm. but we'd also like to see those increased wages since the corporations are, are getting their tax cuts. That's, you know, let's hope for it. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's going to come, but we'll, we'll you know, we we'll all watch. wait and see. Yeah. All right. Next, I'd like to touch on uh, immigration. Mm -hmm. Hot button right now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's there's major issues. That's mm -hmm. the shutdown. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people are, are, are back and forth on the DACA issue, mm -hmm. whether we should, you know, work with that, the wall. Where do you stand on that? Well, let me tell you, um, I think that we need to strengthen our borders that define us as a nation. And, and lately, the conversation between illegal and, e and legal immigration has become confused. And Absolutely. I support legal immigration. It makes our country you know, diverse and rich, and that's all good. Um, I do support uh, the DACA program. These children you know, came here um, not by their own decision. So I support what the president is trying to do. Uh, to make sure that they have a path mm -hmm. um, with regard to putting a whole comprehensive package together, I agree with that. Um, you know, getting rid of the, the, the visa lottery, but making sure that with the chain migration, it's not extended, but it has, you know, a nuclear family. Mm -hmm. So there's some things, you know, we, there's a lot of good people who want to come around the table and fix it, and we need to fix that. So yeah. um, I think it's important that we do. And his plan right do. now is to you know, create a path for 1.8 million, he mm -hmm. just said yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, eliminate the lottery, eliminate the chain migration, and do a merit-based system, which Canada does, and it seems to work. Well, and that's the whole thing. Canada and Australia do this. I mean, mm -hmm. as a country, we would want to, what makes our country rich? We, you know, we would love to give our blessings to everybody in the world, but that's millions and millions and millions of people, and we just can't do that. Yeah. So let's find out you know, what we can do, and, um, and do that's what I would agree with. You think it's going to get through, though, because he's I on do. the other side of it. He I wants do. the wall, which is, you know, border control. And, but I think, though, know. that I think what I read was that there are improvements in the border mm -hmm. wall or fence or technology. Drones. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, again, when common sense people sit around the table and say, OK, what makes sense? Sure. I think that you can you can make some progress. I do. 
I'm yeah. hopeful. Uh, you think we'll get we'll get it done? I think so. Yeah, I do. Without another shutdown. Well, I mean, you. But again, you look at where Elizabeth Warren. You know, the 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 emergency was the government shutting down. The emergency wasn't the vote on DACA. They had six years to do that, and they had till March. Mm -hmm. So that was playing politics with people's lives. Yes. I sat next to a general the other night who said, "I just send 2,000 um, military folks without pay into the field." I mean, and there's m many more ramifications that the shutdown of the federal government had, just Absolutely. rather than playing politics with that. So. Absolutely, yeah, and that and that's the problem with you know adding so many things to to a bill rather right. than focusing on that bill. Everybody right. throws something on and then they fight over it. and Nothing gets done. Right. And uh, and and that def it needs to change. I agree. So and let me give you that example, and that's why I want to be the next U.S. senator because I have a, had a history of working across the aisle, making friends, making saying, okay, how. How do we get there rather than you know grandstanding and you know the political theater people are tired of that yeah I agree all right and next um, Elizabeth Warren has voiced support for proposals to open up uh, supervised sites where intravenous drug users can inject under the mm -hmm. watch of medical professionals. And, and there's two sides, you know, both sides have issues with it. Some say that it's, you know, might be a good use of resources, um, and others are, are just saying no, they, they, they don't agree with that. Where do you stand on that? Well, I would say um, I, I would not want to enable drug use. Um, I come down on the side with agreeing with our governor, Charlie Baker, and Karen Polito on trying to use the civil commitment, which has been a law that's been on the books for a long time. Mm -hmm. So for a repeat offender, um, a medic, um, you know, medical professional or a legal or uh, police can you know, get that person into involuntarily into um, some care so and treatment. And I think you have to ask the reason why. why. Why is this happening? And I think the user has a little personal agency on this too. Mm -hmm. So rather than, you know, so I, I would probably side with not enabling but trying to make sure we can figure out how to get that person treatment and how to be able to get what they need to be able to to fix the addiction yeah. and you know I'm not saying it's easy it's oh, you know it's, not. It, it's an you know, epidemic right it now is an and epidemic and so so that's probably the side that I come down on of you know it affects so many of us every one of us mm -hmm. it does everybody knows somebody everybody who's does been impacted but by you know it. there's you know there's um there's programs where they use different um, drugs I know a sheriff in in, in um, Bristol County uses um, Vivitrol where it but the, the person is within their system so they can watch them. But it, it, the success rate, he said, is 80% because yeah. of what it does and it blocks. And so I think there's other paths that we could do. And maybe that takes money and that maybe that takes a coordination between state and federal. And I would love to be able to do that because it is an epidemic yeah. and we need to we need to focus that. I'm not quite sure I'm an enabler of drug use though. Well, you're not alone and, and the, you know, the people are on both sides, yeah. but there's a lot of people that feel the same way and mm -hmm. other people who feel the opposite. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's interesting. We do need to do something about it. It's definitely an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people suffering out there. And well, and, and let me tell you, I uh, listened to a police chief in Lowell that said, okay, there's less deaths but there's increased addiction. And so you gotta get to that why. You have to get to that, yeah. you know, and figure that out. And I, and I think that part of mental, it is coming you know? from the, also from the pharmaceutical industries being yes. reined in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it might be a little too late for some, but that's, you know, a lot of people don't realize that's where it starts And from. I think there's a lot, a lot of ownership on many of our, you know, sectors there. So, you know, we should try to solve those. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, it's definitely a crisis for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and speaking of, of drugs, we'll say, uh, Attorney Jeff Sessions is voting, uh, vowing to deny gun li licenses to people who have mer medical marijuana cards mm -hmm. um, and those who use rec recreational marijuana, even in states where it's legal. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that? You know, and do you think maybe the Fed should reclassify marijuana? Well, I don't. I wouldn't be in favor of any additional federal gun laws. I think Massachusetts. We have a pretty strict gun laws here. I think the toughest in the country. Um, with regard to the marijuana issue, and you know, I, I think I don't have a solution. You know, from the the federal state type of uh, discourse there. But I do think you know, Massachusetts voted it. 
And so, you, you know, it's the will of the people. And I think that any, and I think I heard our, our Massachusetts U.S. attorney said he'd focus on the opioid issue, which is, is good. And I don't think any, you know, federal prosecutor who is, you know, u using prudent discretion is going to wage a war with a state that has already said, you know, we, we want to go ahead and do this. Now, personally, you know, I'm not, I, I didn't vote for it, um, but I, I don't think that, you know, um, the U.S. attorney will you know, wage a war on Massachusetts and uh, against people who've already voted for its legalization. Yeah, yeah clearly. So the, hopefully, the you know, but that doesn't mean it. that if there's large tra trafficking issues, oh, or absolutely. people, I agree you know, with you we there. should be yeah. tougher on the on the drug traffickers. Uh, yes, I'm all for that. Yeah, and and hopefully, I mean, if it's if it's legalization, they should take care of the drug drug trafficking mm -hmm. at least in the states hopefully. that it's legalized. We'll see, um, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll see on a federal level because Jeff Sessions is pretty adamant about that, and he's mm -hmm. you know going after it. And you know when you start to include guns in that, you know you're you're adding a, a, a different different debate. Yeah, you know? right. And and speaking of guns, a little <clears> off topic, <throat> but uh, what do you think about this gun stock? Uh, ban that's going on. I mean, people are getting letters saying that they have to turn them in. They're not being offered any compensation for it. Uh, it just seems like such a it's it's a violation of the Constitution, and for them to just come across and say, "Turn it over to me." These things have been out there for a long time, and anybody who's a legitimate gun owner. They're looking at this, going, "What? What is going on with well, that?" Well, and I think that this was, you know, a result of the Las Vegas shooting. And uh, you know, let me say that I think that I disagree with Elizabeth Warren when two hours after that happened, she uh, tweets out, you know, uh, "Thoughts and prayers are not enough. Gun yeah. control now." Time I have a real hard yeah. time with that, you know, politicizing that event when people didn't even know where their loved ones were dead or alive. Um, I think that enough of that political theater. That's yes, you, know, you know, there are good law-abiding people who have you know the right to carry their guns and have those guns. I think with the bump stock, I think that was where I think even the NRA agreed, okay, you know what, let's let's agree on that one. It it does make it more of an automatic weapon. Um, so and if, and if they feel that and they and they ban it, shouldn't people be compensated I, for you it? You know what, uh, maybe they yeah, should. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean because, because you're, you're coming into their, you, you, you want to come into their homes and take a piece of their personal property right, right. and not compensate them. And I think that, that makes it even more contentious with the people right. who own them right. legitimately because they look at it and you know and, and there's confusion in, in the whole law about that mm -hmm. but the fact that you know you're at you're being told to turn in something and not be compensated I think right. that have makes some it value worse. for that yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, yeah I'd agree with that all right moving on uh, let's see now we're on to uh, health care mm -hmm. do you think Obamacare should be repealed I mean we've just pretty much Almost kind of killed it <laughs> with the with the tax reform well, and the, I, <laughs> removing the individual mandate, but we still have to come up with a solution for healthcare. Right, and I think we tried that twice, and it's not it didn't work. So I think we need to understand what we need to do, and I think we do need to fix and tweak it. Here in Massachusetts, we we almost have you know 97, 99 percent of the people covered. Um, so we need to figure out you know what do we need to do. And I would say you know I agree with our governor that some of the federal monies that would have been taken away would have been a, a big blow to Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So you know I would. I think we need to make sure we take care of what we have here mm -hmm. and make sure we can everyone has affordable and access ability to health care. I think that's the priority. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest scare is watching Elizabeth Warren go down the path of national health care and Medicaid, Medicare for all, which is really Medicare for none because that would you know strip away all private health insurance, all Medicaid and Medicare and have a government run program. Mm -hmm. And you know again we, we and we have a governor who's an expert in healthcare, so you know, yeah, if there's tweets, we got to, sure. you know, I would like to see some other things, you know, solved and fixed because we need we need to do that. But you know, to take away of a, a state that has 97 percent, 99 percent covered, I'm not quite sure that's sensical. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 it's and it's definitely an issue. I mean, there's a lot of people out there worried about losing their health care coverage, but we've got to do something. And it's been many years; nobody seems to come up with a solution. Well, yeah, and I would like to understand that more. I know that you know it was talked about <coughs> selling uh, policies across state lines. You know, free market principles where you can have the market lower the rates. Um, you know, and but with all the mandates that uh, our government puts in that, you know, maybe there's more of a, a a la carte menu. You know, yeah. that where you can say, okay, let me try to turn 
you know, my choices. <coughs> you know, my sister, um, you know, is, is disabled, and, you know, if there was just a catatrophic plan for her, because she doesn't use all the others. So, you know, I mean, you know, if there and, was and something... And there are different plans. I mean, I, I know there's uh, one plan that I, I saw out in the Midwest. They use it a lot, direct primary care, they call it. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, people are, it's a membership based and you pay for it and you go, it's one stop shopping for mm -hmm. your, you know, for your primary care, mm -hmm. uh, x-rays and, and mammograms and all that. And then they buy a catastrophic plan for yeah. you know, serious accidents, cancer. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they'll look at that, but it's, it just seems like it's such an issue right now and it's so polarizing that, yeah. you know, neither side wants to right. to go, uh, you know, if, if you don't want it and you, and you try to go against it, then it's like, you know, it's, well, I think there's, a lot of the states fight. in the country didn't have what we had. You know, I was on Governor Romney's cabinet when we created and, the you know, Romney maybe it Care. Should be left to the states. And, and, it, it, and it was exactly. I mean, you know, replicate the model maybe, and then you know, be able to 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 do what Massachusetts has done. So yeah. I'd be very careful to change things. Yeah, absolutely, especially here in Massachusetts. Right. All right. And during the past uh, decade, $15 million in awards and settlements have been paid out using taxpayer funds on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. for workplace violations. Uh, this is just coming to a head right now. A lot of people are, didn't mm -hmm. even know about this fund yeah. that's been paying off uh, victims, people who mm -hmm. have made accusations against politicians, mm -hmm. and, and they're using taxpayer dollars mm -hmm. to pay off these people. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't you think these congressmen and, and women, and you yeah. know, they should be held accountable for their absolutely, actions. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and we were out early on this as a campaign. Um, I was the, you know, this, there should be transparency. And I agree, there's a bill in Congress right now that would um, make the perpetrators, uh, you know, pay back to this account, because it is taxpayer money. Yeah. And, and to have the victims, um, you know, make sure that they don't have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. But, but we also don't want them to be re-victimized either. Oh, absolutely you know, not, no. So with their discretion. But I think that that's really important. But I would want to go to Washington and and, and for this example, have more transparency. And, and I also think, you know, having more women in D.C. that are, you know, reasonable and rational and to be able to look at some of these things where we can make sure, you know, our Congress people don't get those perks and privileges that the average person doesn't get. I mean, they don't, you know, this, this is just, I think, um, Egregious. Yeah, it, it really is, and it's it covered up abuses from a, a long yeah. time. You know, people talk about Hollywood, but I mean, we've got it right there in Congress. Our politicians mm -hmm. on both sides of the aisle. It's mm -hmm. it's it's awful. It's good. It's coming to a head, but um, it's it's mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be resolved. That you know. Yeah, uh, part of the perks and privileges that when you know when people go down to Washington with thinking that they're going to help solve the problems, then they become part of the problem. Yeah. You know, and that part of that too for me is term limits. I mean, you know, I don't want to make a career of going going to Washington, I want to go down, do your your job, you represent the people who elected you, mm -hmm. and like our founding fathers who said, you know, a citizen legislator and not a permanent governing class. I think we have too much of that. Yeah. And that leads to this stuff. And, and yeah, I mean, when you get in there and you're in there for 30 years and, you know, you the think pharmaceutical you're industry's paying for them mm -hmm. and the lobbyists and everything else. And they spend too know. much time having to go fundraise and then that starts all the problems, yeah. I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It needs to get back to the people, and they need to remember mm -hmm. who they're uh, representing. Who they represent. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, we're into the first full year of Trump's presidency. What do you think? What do you think he's, how's he doing? Well, I, I have two scorecards for our president. You know, one is the agenda. And I agree with, you know, the Neil Gorsuch, you know, his appointment with certainly the tax reform, as I just mentioned, um, some of the reduction of regulations um, that help businesses work better. Um, but on the other scorecard of tone and temperament, um, it gets a low score. Yeah. You know, I think put down the phone once in a while, I think. Um, so that's where I'm at. But let me tell you what I say also is that if whatever the president wanted, if it was good for the people of Massachusetts, I'll agree. Mm -hmm. If it isn't, I'll speak my mind and say no. And but I always respect the office of the president. But I, you know, I've been on boards and I've been on executive teams. And if you always check the box or if you never speak up, then you're not doing your job. Mm -hmm. And so that's the person who I would be. Yeah, and, that, and that's a challenge with Trump. I mean, a lot of people who do go against him 
often find themselves, you know, on another side. So I think we're seeing um, a little bit of that roller coaster up and down. And I think, you know, by the time I, the election, I think it's just an adjustment for him. I mean, coming in from being a businessman who's used to kind of dictating to people what he wants and expects from them, yes. and then he got to Washington. You know, maybe didn't realize that he was going to have to uh, work with the people. Exactly, and I think that I've been on a lot of campaigns, so I know campaigning is very different than governing, and yes. so you know I understand that transition. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think a, a lot of people are in agreement with you. I think a lot of people, uh, people who did vote for Trump, are are still satisfied with his agenda. He mm -hmm. has accomplished quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we need to keep him off of Twitter. Yeah, uh, and uh, <laughs> may, and maybe just you know. I wish he would stop and, and think once in a while before he speaks. Right. Um, well, I think it disrupts the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, it does because everybody's focused on right. something silly that he might have said and right. and not you know what's just happened in the last week. Right. Um, progress that's being made. So uh, we'll see. Time will tell. You know. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it should be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting a, a little closer to the end, so you know, I'd like you to be able to take some time to address the people and, and tell oh, sure. them a little bit, you sure. know, to, where you're at. What is it that you're intending to do? Uh, you've got a challenge with Elizabeth Warren. Sure, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, a, a lot of people do think that she set her sights on Washington in 2020, uh, but she's here right now, and she's she's saying she's here with us, and she's not going anywhere. So, and her approval rating is still fairly high in Massachusetts. So, well, she does have a high approval rating, but I. I think that she also has some negatives, and I think that um, if you look at her, you know, now she's now doing town halls in year six. So, you know, I think that she realizes that she may not be representing Massachusetts and the majority of people. So that's what I want to do: represent everybody um, and go down and, and do my work, and and then come back and listen to the people, but not in year six. Do it year one, year two, year three. But I'm running because, you know. I look at myself as a rational and reasonable, common sense Republican. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where I have, you know, we elect people like that as our governors in Massachusetts. We've elected a U.S. Senator, Scott Brown, uh, in the first time. So we do have the capacity to do that if people believe that that person, you know, will go down and, and do right by Massachusetts. And I want to be that person. So. Yeah. And like you and said, you know, if I am the nominee in September, I will be the very first woman running as a Republican for U.S. Senate. That's on the ballot. In, in and, I, and I think that's, that's a really good story for the Republicans, but also women. I mean, it's... Oh, it's, absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and for Elizabeth Warren, who is out there, I mean, you look at the, the vote on the spending bill. The people who did not vote was Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Kirsten Gillibrand, Dianne Feinstein, and maybe one other. But those are the people who are looking at 2020. So the proof is in the pudding. She's so busy, you know, having her presidential progressive narrative that it's not it, it that comes first before the people of Massachusetts and I want to put people of Massachusetts first yeah so. she, she's definitely been very vocal very vocal uh, against Trump and, uh, and and some people understand exactly why um, sure. but on the other side you know we want to make sure that things are getting done well and you know if I'm running against her she'll be running against the Beth campaign which is Beth for Senate put my Beth for, Beth for Senate.com put that pitch in but anyhow all right. All right. Well, thank and you so, so much. You, uh, you, uh, you're a businesswoman here in Massachusetts. We got a couple more minutes. Oh, sure. So, yeah. Um, yep. And I, I, you're married with children. Yes. Yeah, so I'm married. I have a wonderful husband who's very supportive, and I've got three children, um, boys, 23, mm -hmm. 22, and 18. So it's wow. the right so you time got your for hands me. Full there too. Yeah. Well, and they've been they're good kids. Um, I will say, you know, we've had uh, all of them. You know, my youngest son is dyslexic. My middle has ADHD, and my my oldest uh, borders Asperger's, so I've had a lot of um, learning challenge issues uh, in our family, and so you know I can relate to other moms and dads, um, parents who you know care about their kids and want to make sure that they're thriving, and what Massachusetts can do to make that happen. So I you know I'd love that opportunity because I feel like I've had real life experience there, certainly as a, a you know a mother and a business owner, but someone who's also seen things on a statewide level too, as yeah. a cabinet member and sat around and, and listened to the other areas of our government that have issues and problems and where we can work together to be able to solve them. Yeah. Because you know we solve some problems but then some others creep up. You Absolutely. Know? That's <laughs> so. the way it is. And and the Republicans are you know they're growing in Massachusetts. It's 
it's taken a long time. I don't know how yeah. long it's going to take before we really balance it out. But um, I mean, even Trump did fairly well in some of the counties in Massachusetts. Right. So I think, uh, I, you know, you got a great shot at it. Well, here, you know, I give this example. What we did with Scott Brown in the first race is that uh, we played a, a radio of JFK saying he was going to lower taxes. So people who always thought they were Democrats could say, you know what, I'm, I'm a JFK Democrat. Right. I guess I can agree with him too. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me. Right. Coming on and yeah, uh, my pleasure. answered some questions. I hopefully everybody got a little bit of information from Beth and. Uh